Hi, my name is Judy Kerpich, and currently I am talking to you from Lewis, Delaware, where I've built a studio and have a home. I also work sometimes out of Tacoma Park, which is right next to Washington, D.C., but during COVID times, I've been basically decamped to Delaware. About uh, six years ago, I discovered a material that was really unusual. I was um, doing a series where I was searching for uh, Japanese indigo homespun cotton, which was a little bit difficult to find. It's usually found in old futons. And um, during that search, I came upon this unusual material and decided to um, buy a couple of meters of it. And that really changed everything. So for the last six years, I've been really experimenting almost nonstop with this fabric. Uh, what it is, is actually a cotton that has been dyed indigo. And once it's dyed indigo, it is then over dyed with a combination of ox blood or pig blood and various leaves and peppers and stuff. Uh, after it dries, it is coated, one side is coated with egg and it's beaten with mallets. And what this does is it produces one side is very, very shiny and one side is matte. And I was really interested in the juxtaposition of kind of the shiny and dull and um, started playing around with it. Uh, the fabric itself really only comes in two colors, depending on what blood you use. Uh, it comes in black or it comes in brown. Um, although there's a lot of variations between um, the browns or even the blacks. Uh, it's forced me to do, you know, basically monochromatic compositions, which I enjoy. Uh, but it also forced me to really understand the importance of texture when working with this material. The fabric itself is really unusual. It, it holds a pleat really, really well. It does not fray, so you can basically cut almost any shape and it will not fray. It, for number 12, the piece that's in the show, I was able to actually punch holes in it and um, it holds the whole circle beautifully. Um, on the other hand, there are some complications with this fabric. Uh, it is only made 13 or 14 inches wide. And since I generally am working about 70 inches by 70 inches roughly, I had to find ways of working with this fabric uh, that didn't look like I was making 13 or 14 inch sections. Uh, that was a, a challenge for me and it took me probably three or four years to figure that one out. Um, in addition, I had to figure out how to quilt it because the fabric itself is pretty stiff. Um, I do not have a long arm. I work on a, a juki, which I love. Um, but trying to feed very stiff, heavily pleated material through a fairly, a, basically, you know, a nine inch arm is, was difficult. So I had that as a challenge as well. And I, I would say the first three years I produced garbage. I, I mean, not garbage. They were, I learned something from every single piece, but the first, you know, couple in this series, it wasn't until I really got to uh, number seven in the series that I felt like I was really cooking. Number 12 was truly an improvisational composition. Um, I started out with sketches. I quickly left them because I wasn't happy with them. Um, I started making components that I could group together. Um, and I spent, oh, I'm going to say weeks combining and recombining and stitching and ripping and recutting to try and get the composition that I really wanted. Um, and it took me a long time and it was a while before I was really happy with anything. In many ways, the later pieces of this series are self-portraits um, of a sort. To most people, I seem very strong and bold and self-sufficient. I ran an agency for 37 years. I was a pretty successful businesswoman and I didn't let too many people in to really understand who I was. Um, and that's kind of the way this this my pieces are. You know, from far away they're very, very bold, strong figure ground compositions. 
it's really only upon um, closer inspection do you have any idea of you know, maybe the detail and the complexity. And in my case, the fragility of my emotional base. Um, I think for the careful observer, there's a lot to discover, both in the fabric and in me. Thank you.